So here we are on study number two uh, of uh, Connect season two, and, uh, gifts, spiritual gifts. Um, last time we looked at the collection of gifts and um, what, what each, some of those gifts meant and uh, their divine origins, the diversity, the comparison um, between the, the way that gifts operate and the way that the different parts of the body function together. Um, in this study, we're going to uh, look at um, what those gifts are and how they function. Um, the title this time is Unwrapping the Gifts. I want to read to you from Hebrews 2, 3 and 4. This is um, what the writer to the Hebrews says. It says, This salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So in this study we're going to look at the nine gifts that are listed in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 8 to 10 and I'm going to try and break them up into three uh, different categories and this is these are the three categor categories so I'll give you these right from the start. Um, I think what we have here are gifts of influence gifts of impact and gifts of insight. So let's look first of all at gifts of influence and under gifts of influence I would want to list uh, prophecy, speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. In Acts 13 we have the record of how the leaders in the church at Antioch got together and they were worshipping, they were fasting, they were praying and uh, we're told that while they were doing that, that the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. We're not told uh, how that word was delivered, um, but we do know that it not only influenced that meeting, but it influenced the whole of church history. It really was a hinge moment in the life of the church because um, out, of the, out of that prophetic word and the obedience to that word um, came... Paul and Barnabas's um, missionary uh, expedition to Europe uh, and they're preaching, preaching the gospel all around the Mediterranean and really I suppose you could say that we are here today uh, because the leaders in the church at Antioch responded to the prophetic word that they were giving, given. In uh, 1 Corinthians 14 1 Paul says and encourages the Corinthians to seek the gift of prophecy more than any other gift. He does that because prophecy builds up people. It encourages them, it comforts them, um, it can change the spiritual atmosphere over a church's life or over the life of an individual. It's got that kind of influence. Speaking in tongues is also a gift of influence. It can influence our own spirits because um, the Bible says that when, we're speaking when we speak in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4, um, that we build ourselves up, that our own spirits are edified and built up. Um, speaking in tongues is something that's incredibly helpful in prayer. And both Paul and Jude encourage us to pray in the Holy Spirit, um, Ephesians 6, 18 and Jude 20. And then of course when speaking in tongues is used in conjunct conjunction with interpretation of tongues, um, that sort of functions as a prophecy or it can be a prayer towards God. So tongues influences our own spirits and it also influences the spiritual realm. So prophecy, tongues and tongues plus interpretation have the ability to positively influence people, situations and even the spiritual realm. A second gift, or a second classification or category of gifts are what I would call gifts of impact. And these are gifts of faith, healings and miraculous powers or um, miracles. Acts 3 tells the story of Peter and John going up to the temple and on their way up to prayer in the temple um, they encounter a man who's lame and uh, as a result of their faith and the way that they unleash their faith, the man is healed. He's made completely whole. And here's how 
the aftermath of the miracle is described. Um, verse 9 of Acts 3, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called <coughs> Solomon's Colonnade. So the healing made an immediate impact. Um, and Peter explained how this came about. He said that it was um, in the name of Jesus, by faith in the name of Jesus, that the man that they saw and know was made strong. So it was faith in Jesus' name that produced the healing. Healing and faith are impact gifts. So is the gift of miracles. In Acts 8, 13, um, we're told that Simon the sorcerer was astonished by the miracles that accompanied Philip's ministry. And it says, Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Signs are sometimes mentioned alongside miracles, uh, and sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the two. Um, but don't worry too much about that. And um, simply to say, simply to underline here, that miracles have an impact. So healing and miracles um, are gifts that operate uh, in such a way that they have an impact upon uh, those around them. And they operate through faith. Um, the gift of faith that's mentioned here is probably more than simply believing God. Um, it does seem that some people have an extraordinary level of faith. It seems to be more of a special gift granted by God in certain situations. Um, in Mark 11, um, you might remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree and the fig tree Im immediately withered. Um, Jesus told his disciples to have faith in God and he said that if they did, they could move mountains. Now, obviously Jesus wasn't talking about literal mountains. Um, he, was, he was talking uh, about things that are and uh, we might call them possibilities or huge problems. Some people have commented on what Jesus says here because in the original language, it doesn't just say have faith in God. It says have the faith of God, which seems to indicate that this is a, a, a supernatural impartation of faith that God gives to us when we're facing a specific need or problem. And it might just be that this is the kind of faith that Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Then there are gifts of insight. And uh, under uh, gift of insight, I would class or I'd list a uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. There's a story in Luke's gospel, uh, chapter 5, verse 17 to 26, in which Jesus heals a paralyzed man. It's a very well-known story. It's the one where the man's let down through the roof. And we're told in verse 22 that Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Um, Jesus had supernatural insight into what was going on. The gifts of knowledge, wisdom, and discerning of spirits give us supernatural insight into what's going on. Um, what, what are we talking about here when we talk about Wisdom, knowledge, distinguishing between spirits. Um, the word of wisdom, I use that, that's, the, um, that's taken from the authorised version. Many people would still use the term word of wisdom um, rather than message of wisdom. The word of wisdom is wisdom given to us by the Holy Spirit. It can unlock situations, solve problems, or provide wise answers to difficult or even loaded questions. Um, in Matthew 22, 18 to 22, we have the story of um, the religious leaders asking Jesus about paying taxes to Caesar. And we're told that Jesus takes the coin and he says to them, whose image is on the coin? And of course, it's Caesar's image that's on the coin. And Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. And it says in verse 21 that when they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. And Jesus had wisdom and he answered with a word of wisdom um, this attempt 
to trick him up, uh, to trick him and to trap him. And the Holy Spirit makes this kind of supernatural wisdom available to us. What about the message of knowledge or the word of knowledge? Word of knowledge is information um, that's revealed to us rather than what we can learn naturally through conversation or research. Um, perhaps one of the best examples of the word of knowledge is found in John 4. Um, do you remember when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well and he asks her uh, to go and call her husband and she says, I have no husband. And he says, yes, you're right. Um, you've had five husbands, um, but the man that you now with is not your husband. And uh, she, her reaction is, sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Um, later on, the woman described Jesus in this way. Um, she said, he told me, John 4 verse 39, everything I've ever done. And the end result was that lots of people believed. So uh, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge are, are insight gifts. Then there's the discernment of spirits. Um, what does that look like? I think possibly the best illustrations found in Acts 16, where um, uh, Paul and Silas are in Philippi, and they're followed day after day um, by a young woman um, who keeps calling out and telling everyone that these, uh, that Paul and Silas are God's messengers of salvation. And even though what she's saying is true, Paul eventually confronts her and casts a demon out of her. Um, what, why did Paul do that? I mean, in some ways, one would have thought that this, this woman was, uh, that she was actually being very encouraging to Paul and Silas. But Paul discerned that there was something else happening here, that this was actually an evil spirit at work. So the Holy Spirit can provide insight into situations, enabling us to distinguish good from evil and to detect um, what the source of uh, some particular uh, utterance or influence is. So there we have it. We have gifts of impact, uh, and gifts of insight, uh, gifts of influence, um, and the Holy Spirit makes those available to us. So uh, let's pray that we'll receive those gifts and we'll use them to build other people up and to build up God's church. Amen.